Hi guys, uh, McKenna here, and uh, I'm excited to be back. I've been wanting to film a video since like end of last week, and been busy, so I decided today's the day. I'm gonna shower so I smell great for you guys. Um, and I've been doing a ton of stitching, I have some stuff that I scored at the thrift store, um, a new release, all kinds of good stuff. So, yeah, just, uh, I guess, quick life update. All is well at the uh, club mom. No, nothing to update you guys with. It's all been really, really good. The boys are well, uh, baseball and soccer, usual. And um, Arizona last week, we had some rain, but it is absolutely gorgeous today. And last week, towards the end of last week, um, I even went out and laid in the sun for a little bit. So, I've gotta start working on my base tan. So I have been stitching so much. I have gotten into a really good routine in the morning, getting up and giving myself something to drink and stitching for about an hour, hour and a half before I kind of jump into anything. Um, and then going over to the house, if there's any sort of downtime, soccer practice, Hell's baseball game I took stitching um, and then definitely in the evening when I come back here and relax and um, throw on some some true crime and go to town if you were looking for a new crime true crime YouTube channel I have just started binge watching it is called explore with us and the videos are great because usually they're like an hour, hour and a half. Some of them are, are shorter, but they show the video of the interrogation process and the narrator comes in and will pause it and be like, these are, you know, signs of someone lying or uh, multi-personality disorder or psychopath or sociopath. Um, or how the suspect is like contradicting themselves. It's super interesting. Um, so yeah, I've been watching that while stitching because old lady hobby, true crime. It's perfect. Um, let's talk about Mermaid's Folly. Years ago, I had started this on. I even remember it was a dark blue DMC thread and tobacco 22 count heart anger. Um, and I don't know what it was. I wasn't loving it. Always have loved this pattern. Um, it's an amazing piece. Emily Eclectic Possessions is a overachiever and she stitched the whole thing. But I just like the creeper guy and the mermaid. So this chart is huge. That is because it's five complete charts in this packet. So it's basically any sort of configuration that you want. You want the old man, creeper, old man and mermaid, mermaid and dragon, or just the dragon. So, um, my chart with the creeper and the mermaid is eight pages, and I just started my third page. Yep. So, I'm stitching this in Cottage Garden Threads ink. I should maybe face the other way. My chair is usually not this direction, it's pointing this way. Um, but I was on my sofa. Yeah, I got a sofa. It's a futon sofa. Um, but I thought the background wasn't all that interesting. Maybe I'll put on my 
overhead light. Let's see how that goes. Nope, not that light. I gotta come all the way over here. Okay, let's try this and see how this works out. Okay, that'll work. So great variegation, first time using cottage garden threads. Absolutely love them. Available on 1884 Stitchery. Let's make a pile. Okay, so. Oh, and then I also have two finishes. What the hell is going on over here? I'm stitching this on. So this is all I have left of the first full skein. And then this is all I have, so I need to order more. Um, but absolutely lovely, and I love how stays on the card. They're pre-cut. You can just grab a length and then piece it out, and it all is on the card. Follow the directions if you want to do that that way. Oh, what am I stitching this on? Do I still have the tag on it? I don't. And that is for that piece. I know it's on. Usually I'm good at keeping it together. Oh, because the, the, um, this was from a larger piece and I just guessed and cut it down and left the tag on the other part. This is just kind of Clean up the edges. It's a 40 count. Mushroom Lugana. One over one tenth stitch. So that's two pages. I mean, obviously I have way more than I'll need. Um, but that is where I am at. And I absolutely love how it is coming out. This is way farther than I got the first time around. Um, and, you know, I have it in my Q-snap and usually the edges I'll fold over. Um, and then I finished page two and moved the Q-snap. Um, and so when I undid it and like set it down and came back and saw it from afar, I was like, oh shit. So yeah, love it. And this is the first time I have done anything in 10 stitch. So I highly recommend 10 stitch. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure this is 40 count. I don't think it's 36. Maybe it is 36. I don't know. When I made a post when I started it, I put all the information. So um, when I first started stitching it, I was like, oh, I don't know. Am I going to like the coverage? I had to trust the process. I had to get a good amount of work in before I could decide that the coverage is good just give it time um, but it was definitely weird starting it and seeing all these half stitches um, not that I wanted to go back and make them full stitches but it was definitely just is this gonna turn out and I definitely scoured um, Instagram, all the hashtags with, you know, 10 stitch, half stitch, um, and tried to figure out what I like. And now I'm thinking, you moron, it's not 36 or 40 count, this is 28 count. I think it's 28 count. I don't know, I'm losing it. But 
no, I'm really, really happy with the progress. I was like just going to town on it. I can't believe I am now on the third page, but I was like, okay, you're wanting to stitch. Let's switch up the projects. So when you do a video, you have more to show than just one. Okay, my two finishes. This is Death and Judgment from Not Forgotten Farm. And I'm gonna be fraying the edges, cutting it out, making it smaller and putting it probably into my like junk journal that I have for like sort of darker pieces. Um, Cause I like it, um, but I'm not gonna be, who's calling me? Framing it up and like putting it on the wall or make a pillow. So I frogged out the owl and this bird because I do want to cut it. I don't want to include them. I just do the words. So yeah. Um, for a while I had to just hang it up on my refrigerator because the refrigerator at home is stainless steel so magnets don't attach to it. Um, but the one here is magnetic and so like I have a picture of my dad and I on my fridge and then my grandparents and so I was trying to think where do I want to keep this little piece I know I'm gonna be doing a video soon threw it up on the uh, refrigerator this piece I don't think I even I posted once about it loved it <sighs> miss prim heart and hand Love the colors. Um, changed out a couple of the colors just because I didn't have like the over dyed, but I picked ones that were close enough. Absolutely love this. I have a heart in hand tattoo, and it already said 1884 on it, so I had to stitch it. I will definitely frame this up and hang it somewhere. I really, really love it. So yeah, Miss Prim, she is on Etsy. I have done one of her other designs, Hussy. <laughs> um, yeah, great designs. Um, all right, so I switched from, I'll even take it out of the queue, or my hoop. Um, I wanted to change from mermaid's folly wasn't feeling my ink circles piece that's back in my decision realm i know are they in? don't want to hear it don't want to hear it um and So it was either between the Cinderella sampler from Willow Hill Samplings um, or my Elizabeth's needlework design, the antique animal alphabet. But I decided to do the sampler. I haven't touched this in a while. 36 count X Jew design fabric. Love it. And I think finished up the pumpkin so well here's the whole thing hard to see I know I need something because I don't think this is all gonna work stand up and see where we at so I had finished kind of like these two rows the guy the horse and this flower thing when you guys last saw it but finished the pumpkin those three flowers and then came back down threw in that flower that um and then these two this basket is not done yet with the dark i was stitching on this during Ayrton's 
soccer practice last night in the car and I'm pretty sure that color is in the car somewhere. So, because when I came home here last night and laid out all the threads, I was like, um, I don't see that color and I know I was working on it at soccer practice in the car, so I'll find it. But yeah, there's this kind of open work piece. And I had totally forgotten to stitch in something, so I just stitched in my initials, MCG. But, let's see, right? I love it though. I love the motifs and how everything is spread out. There is a border. Not gonna do one. Nope. Um, okay, that goes there, I'm putting these here. So that is stitching that I have completed and done. Let's talk thrift store finds. I have not gone thrifting in forever since I've been here at least, so three months. But I get like this urge every once in a while, like, you gotta go, you're gonna find something. Um, so I had lunch with a group of ladies and decided to hit the thrift store nearby and so happy I did. Four um, lavender and lace patterns. This is Angel of Winter. Angel of the Sea. This one I thought was gorgeous. Fairy Dreams. And Angel of Hope. So those will be going up on 1884. Always go through the frames. I'm like a frame whore. Love this. Two bucks. Um, and I just loved the carved look, circular frames, don't sleep on them, and I can easily, it's, now looking at it, I think it's like hot glue gunned in, no, nope, it's nailed, um, but I can easily pop this out um, and use that, but I really, really like that. Probably not with the hanger, um, but I could probably screw in like one of the those hanging teeth thing hanging teeth backers and then have this up on the wall so grabbed that ever since kelly um made my jean jacket with the sampler on it i'm even more tuned into going over to the frames and looking to see if there's anything that is framed up, finished, take it out and put it on a jean jacket. But then I've also been remembering to myself, well, if you do go, make sure you check out like the bedding, the blankets, which is usually not a section I check out, but swung by and I love it. The colors, the main background, the background color is black, so everything just pops. And it was five dollars. Five dollars. Granny square quilt crocheted for the win, five bucks, absolutely love it. In the morning, I'm a little cold, but don't wanna, you know. Heaven forbid I put pants on or a jacket, this will be perfect. So, five dollars, really? I mean, they, I saw this and snatched it up and sent her a picture of it, I couldn't buy it fast enough, so. 
the four charts, the frame, and the blanket, 19 bucks. Not bad. Um, and it's always great because where I love to do my thrifting is White Dove. So all the money goes back into the nonprofit organization and it helps supply um, hospice care to people for absolutely for free. So stitching, thrifting, let's talk 1884. You guys are absolutely amazing. I have released two separate sets of Stitcher's surprise bags. Is that what I'm calling them? <laughs> um, and you guys have responded amazingly. I was powwowing with Kelly. She gave me this idea. I had always thought about it and wanted to do it. I just needed to talk it out with somebody and get feedback and then do it. Um, I didn't just want to like make it a typical sort of grab bag style because I wanted to curate every single one. Um, so it's not like I was going to go to the warehouse. If you're new here, <laughs> um, at the house where Joe and the boys are, I have taken over the spare guest room and made it my warehouse. Put up shelving so I can see all my inventory that I have not listed. And I go in there, call it my warehouse, and I go shopping when I want to put up new stuff for you guys. So went to the warehouse and was like, okay, let's just do 10 bags and see how they sell. Um, so went through everything and made sure I pulled 10 of all the same charts because then I could write down in the description these are the patterns by name you will be getting. Don't know the design, but at least you know, hey, I'm reading through this description. The first set of 10 bags I had had 17 items. The second set of bags had 21. Um, so it's like everyone got a piece of 28 count fabric. Everyone was guaranteed Mill Hill B pit pack. Um, let's see, a chart with my needle. Um, Bent Creek Trilogy. So it wasn't just going to be like kind of a crapshoot. Um, and you could be like, hey, I like, you know, 10 out of the 17 items. I'm going to go for it. And then I took the time in making sure, okay, this chart, Rosewood Manor, it's a bell pull design or it's a sampler-ish design or it's a certain theme. I made sure that another chart wasn't that same theme. So, <coughs> excuse me, you wouldn't open it and it would be, you know, five Christmas patterns and be like, whatever. So I made sure like, okay, this is a bell pull kind of design, no more for that, for that bag. All right, this heart in hand is a Christmas design. So I'm gonna make sure when I give her a, you know, Bent Creek, it's not a Christmas design. Maybe it's a Halloween. So I don't just go into the warehouse, pick random number of items, shove them in a bag. In this case, it comes priority envelope. Um, I really try to pay attention to every single bag that I do. Um, and they've been amazingly received, you guys. They sold out both times. And um, it's a fantastic way for me to 
clear out inventory that is in my warehouse that is just sitting there. It re-inspires me to go through stuff and organize it. Um, and I got a, I got a crap ton of inventory coming. I'll share more details. Let's just say basement and I'm flying on the other side of the country. Mm -hmm. So get ready. So maybe it's a good thing that in my living space here, I haven't put a whole lot of stuff because <laughs> I have a feeling I'm going to be using a lot of my open space here for organizing and keeping it here. <laughs> so no, super excited about that. Um, so the bags have been, those surprise bags have been so much fun to put together. I am working on a third set of bags, not sure how many. So when I was going through my warehouse, I came across project bags that are Civil War reproduction fabrics. So Kelly, I'm going to be reaching out to you and having you verify which ones. There's 10 bags, but I think only seven or eight of them are the fabric. These bags are going to be um, on the more expensive side because you get a project bag and then I am doing very high-end charts so um, these are going to be very very much curated well thought out collection um, but I am so excited to start on those. I was at the house yesterday and was going through stuff and Joe walks in he's like what are you doing and so I told him about the bags and he thought it was a fantastic idea um, and he's like this is great because you can just go shopping in your warehouse and pull stuff and I'm like I know I know it's great so I brought back a whole box full of charts that I will need to sit down, go through, and then start making piles of what goes with what. So be on the lookout for that. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and Facebook for when those will become available. I will probably do a Instagram live and then make a post um, and pull one of the bags randomly and sort of talk about it so you know what to expect. And then I will give you guys a couple days in advance of a time and a drop date for those. I'm trying to think what else. Within the last month, I have received the go ahead to purchase not one, not two but three more design companies. I am so excited. Two of them um, you guys are very much aware of and I already sell those designs um, and have already released, re-released some of those. Um, and the third one is probably going to be new to many, many of you, but absolutely gorgeous designs. More on the sampler side. Um, so excited about that. Obviously more coming, so stay tuned. My last IG live 
that I did on Instagram, I do talk about those. So if you were on the edge of your seat and you want to know specifically which three companies, Instagram, my last live video, and I talk about those. I have not released a new 1884 stitchery only exclusive design in a while. Um, my girlfriend Arlene works by ABC has been absolutely slammed getting ready for Nashville. Nashville's over but then all the stuff that you have to do after Nashville. So she found some time. I send her my charts. She makes them look all pretty and she sent me this one this morning. It was waiting in my mail. I printed it out and love it. And I hope you guys do as well. Do as well. I'll read the back. The sampler with its unusual long narrow shape was made in Italy. I had to. The maker included her initials M N F on her work. She likely stitched her sampler in the first two decades of the 19th century as her sampler resembles other Italian samplers that are dated. Uh, the original sampler is in the textile collection of Colonial Williamsburg. All DMC. This is the MNF sampler. Now that I have my overhead light on, I will take it out. And that is what she looks like. And that is the original photo of the original. And I, I don't know, it's just simple and romantic. And I really liked the colors and the border is this floral vine work. Um, so yeah, alphabet across the top, and then it also continues on the second line, numbers one through 10, and then her initials there at the end. All cross stitch, full cross stitch. There's a little back stitching on uh, the door and then antenna of the butterfly. So, this will be available for purchase, PDF, paper copy, by the time you're watching this. Yeah, so if you're interested, you can go over to 1884 Stitch Tree and pick this up. Um, that is it, but I have one more purchase to show you. So, slowly, you know, wanting to make my space feel a little homier, Obviously, I have my stitching chair here from my office at the house. I just got a simple black futon um, sofa. So when the boys come over or I have company, I mean, they can sleep with me or <laughs> crash on the sofa. The rug that I had in here, which was in the warehouse, I actually moved and put it underneath my bed. And then I bought two shelving units off of Amazon, which are at the house. I need to get them over here somehow. <laughs> um, those I'm gonna put side by side in my bedroom so I can put more stitching on them and stuff like that. Cause right now the only shelving I have in this place is this. And this I may move and put at sort of the entrance of coming into my place. Not exactly sure and maybe put something else here. So what I am putting though above my bed, I don't have a headboard. Let's just go on a tour, shall we? I don't have a headboard. So I have just all of this space. 
Um, I'm even thinking about painting these dressers different colors, but there, see the rug, but had all this space and I wanted to put something, um, a wall hanging and I Googled and searched and looked at all kinds of different things, macrame art, um, that are on like Etsy and stuff like that. So yeah, I was just kind of looking around and trying to decide and um, found this massive piece on Wayfair. Look at that, you can see my jacked up situation where I had the camera. Never had ordered anything on Wayfair. It took over a month to get to me. I was like, oh my God. So I'm gonna show you, I absolutely love it. I can grab so many colors out of it. But when I woke up this morning, I'm thinking, God, do I wanna hang it over my bed? Do I want it out here somewhere? I was even thinking like where my TV would be above. I don't know. So I wanna make sure you guys are getting the color of it. Let me turn on my kitchen light. Okay. Laid it flat, but I'm definitely going to have to iron it before I hang it up. So it is massive, huge tapestry. Hope I can get it all in. Um, still available on Wayfair. Comes with the pocket so you can do a rod through which is how i'm going to do it and then see some of the nicest you know you're a stitcher when you have thread in your hair some of the nicest like because we're not doing holes in here 3m kind of hooks to then set the rod on um, it came with hardware, but they were just brass push pins. It was the strangest thing. It is this green color and I absolutely love it. I'm going to get closer, but yeah, it's not cross stitch. It's just this woven tapestry. Definitely wanted something large because the space above my bed is large um, and I just wanted to do one single thing. So um, this is basically just a little, obviously smaller than the width of my bed, but the length top to bottom is fantastic and I think it's gonna look really, really nice. But again, I was blown away and love this and don't know maybe if I want to keep this out here somewhere. So I'm really torn. So I just have it laying on the floor to work out any sort of folds, um, but I'll definitely iron it before I put it up. But yeah. Love it. Um, I think it was like 150 bucks, 160. So if you're interested, you can grab your own wall tapestry. But yeah, I was thinking maybe here would be kind of fun um, because then I could see it and then I would move this whole thing and take some stuff off of it and put it here at the front door. So, but yeah, otherwise this is it people. It's, it's minimal. And then I need a rug, obviously, but um, yeah, let me know your opinion. Should I hang it here? I think that would look really, really good. Um, then I'm gonna have to find something else for my bedroom. I don't know, can decide. 
All right, that is it for me. I am on picking kid up duty today. Joe went golfing. Um, need to eat, upload this MNF. That's, it has slipped a couple times. Um, will be available by the time you see this video. Questions, comments, leave them down below. I always, always appreciate your guys' support with 1884 Stitchery and lots of goodness coming. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.